What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Order Stuff and today for you guys I'm going to be labelling and tracking things in this honest and unsponsored review slash tutorial of Motion VFX M Callouts Simple 2. Roll that intro. <laughs> As ever, links to this software plus any other relevant videos I will pop in the description below. And if you do enjoy this video, please let me know by leaving me a thumbs up. So what is MCallout Simple 2? MCallout 2 is unsurprisingly the second in the line of tracked and animated title bundles from Motion VFX. And I reviewed the original pack recently and I liked them immensely. And straight away, here's a cheeky tip for you. You can download a free demo version of this software. It's a no-brainer. Download it. It's awesome. I'll link it below. So in this video, I want to know what's new, why Motion VFX felt like a second pack was necessary, and then which one's best. But first, let me show you how they work. Jumping into Final Cut now, and the beauty of the M Callouts range is that you can pretty much drag and drop and you'll get great results. So I'm just going to go with the very first preset just to show you what you get. As you can see, I've got a really cute subject for this demo. I thought it'd be fun to track this dog's nose. So what I'm going to do is change the duration of the callout. So just I'm just going to drag in the sides until I'm happy with where it's going to start and finish. I'm going to need to reach up to the top right hand corner and show inspector so that I can see all the parameters of this callout. I'm just going to do some basic editing of the parameters for now. Don't worry, I'll come back to this after I've done the tracking section. All I need to do is bring my playhead to the point in which the callout starts. Drag the tracking box over whatever we want to track. You can change the size of the tracking box and this will dramatically affect the way that it tracks things. I have got some tips for you of how best to track things using different size boxes and that's coming up later in this video. In this case I'm going to make it small so it just focuses on the dog's nose. When I hit track you can see M Callouts follows the footage frame by frame and you can see just what a ridiculously amazing job it does. I have sped this footage up quite a lot so don't worry when you go to track this it will take a lot longer, it'll take a minute or so. Once that's done I'm just going to make a few tweaks in the parameters. I'm going to change the size, the location, tweak the colours a little bit. I'll change the underlying colour to the colour of the sky and the text and the line can be the same color as the dog, why not? So there we have it, a beautiful call out for a beautiful subject. This really shows you just how powerful that tracking is. Tell us more about tracking, Harv. M callouts are tracked callouts, so you can attach them to basically anything in your footage and the software will do the heavy lifting for you. The tracking is so accurate and that's largely because it's powered by the Mocha engine, which is the secret source behind a lot of the tracking functionality in Adobe Premiere Pro, which I will demonstrate for you now. Okay, so in this example, I really want to challenge the tracking system and at the same time show you a trick that really could help you out if you're struggling to make the track work. So I've chosen a particularly nice call out. In this case, it's call out number 17, which is nice and modern and has the feel of a progress bar. And I think it'll really suit this footage of a lens rotating. Again, I'm gonna do the basic editing. I'm gonna change the size, change the text. I kind of like the color scheme, so I'm gonna leave that as is. For this example, I want to track here where it says 20 millimeter, 1.4. However, when I put the playhead to the beginning of the clip, you can see the problem. As I shot this with a fairly shallow depth of field, you can see that that text is actually out of focus and that could cause problems for the tracking system. So to get around this, I went to the end of the clip and noticed that the text was perfectly clear and in focus. This is gonna be far, far easier for the tracking system to latch onto it and keep hold of it. So the solution is to leave your playhead at the end of the clip, position your tracking box as best as you can, and then hit the reverse button and track it backwards. As you can see, when I speed up the footage, the Mocha engine has done amazingly well once again. All that's left to do is some final positional adjustments now that we have it tracked, we can see where it's going to be. So tracking in reverse helped me no end for this shot. And yes, there are more tracking tips to come in this video. You get 50 different presets in this bundle and much like the first pack, they are amongst the most stylistically versatile of all of the M Call Arts presets. There's not enough time for me to show you all of them, but let me show you just a few that I think are the very best. Here's the first that I love, and I really like the fact that you can just see half the word. You've got to be careful that it's suitable, of course, but I think this is really cool. I love the style of this one, just the bracket and the way the words are stacked. Coupled with the font and the movement, I just love the look of this one. 
This one I find particularly beautiful. It actually reminds me of the Tron logo, but it's much classier than that. You could use it for lots of different applications. I mentioned that they're really stylistically versatile, so here's a few clips to give you some inspiration. Is there such a thing as a perfect product? Well, no, of course there isn't. And as this is an unsponsored video, and I promised you a warts and all review, we've had, I feel like we've had plenty of all. Let's have some warts. Let's get on to some pros and cons. First, the cons and tracking can take a little bit of practice. It's not that this software isn't amazing. I mean, it's super powerful. It's just that sometimes it struggles to hold a track. Honestly, this is usually user error, and the trick is to consider the object you're trying to track and adjust the tracking box accordingly. Let me show you a really good example. Instinctively, when I first started using M callouts, I would make the tracking box smaller and I would position it just over my eye. My thought process was, well, it's a really high contrast area that it should be able to track no problem at all. However, as soon as you start tracking and you realize you have to deal with blinking, my head turning, that kind of thing, admittedly here I'm doing it in a ridiculously exaggerated way, inevitably you will notice some issues with the track moving. And in this example you can see it lost my eye completely. I know what you're thinking, Harv, that's obvious, you moved your eye out of the shot completely, but this is where a change in mentality really helps you. So trying again now and I'm going to open up that tracking box to envelop my whole face. My hope is that it's going to be a really stable track and it's going to be able to withstand me turning my head completely. This is really obviously the case when we look at this sped up footage and then when we look at the clip you can see the call out isn't reacting to when I blink or when I turn my head it just returns to its natural position. Side by side you can see the tracking in the top clip moves almost instantly as soon as I blink and then it loses the track as soon as I move my head. So it's just something else to consider and I hope this saves your bacon. Second con, it's not uncommon to have issues with the placement of your call outs. Honestly though this really only happens when you reopen a project and you can just readjust it or if you try to render a product down. It's a really minor issue that's fixed very easily by just dragging it back to where it needs to be, or if that doesn't work, just right click on it and make it a compound clip. Third con. I'd say it's definitely not a budget plugin, but then you get what you pay for and and it definitely has a premium feel to it. It's not, not a proper con, is it? I wish it was cheaper. Motion VFX have made a very professional premium plugin here and it's priced fairly, and to be honest, I want them to carry on making good plugins, and obviously they need to get paid, so just ignore me, it's priced right. And onto the pros, firstly they are really easy to use. It's just a matter of picking the preset that you think closest represents what you're looking for, and then you can tweak away. Two, they are very tweakable, and I love a tweakable plugin. In fact, I find it really frustrating when you get a plugin where you can't change some of the parameters in the menu. Luckily with these you can, and as long as you start with a preset that you like, you're gonna get some really good results, and I'll show you an example. These three callouts are actually all the same preset. I've just messed around with a bit, changed the color schemes and layout so they look quite different. Three, I'm a big, big fan of the way these look. They're super slick, really professional and versatile. No complaints whatsoever on the aesthetics. They're great. Something else I love doing with these callouts is using them as lower thirds. In fact, every single lower third you see in this video is actually from the original M callouts pack. It's such a simple thing to do and you get such nice results because they're all beautifully animated. So I found a callout that I like, so I'm just gonna drag it onto my clip and then all I need to do is basically hide that tracking spot. Now there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can either go into the menu and find the parameter and either just change the track spot size to zero or just make it transparent. The same goes for if your callout has a line, you just do the same thing. Make the line width either to zero or just make it opaque. Alternatively, you can just drag the whole track spot area out of your frame. 
Of course, you don't have to worry about tracking because it's not a moving component. All you need to do then is just customize it and add your own text and it looks awesome. I've got other examples on the other M Callouts review videos that I've done, so definitely check them out. M Callouts can actually make amazing looking thumbnails for your videos as well. Here you can see my thumbnail for the original M Callouts pack. And this is my thumbnail from the M Callout Specs review video I did. So all I've done is just take a similar nice looking photo and then I'm just gonna drag it into Final Cut Pro where I've just spent some time dragging in three different callouts. I've played with the colors and tried to make them really stand out and look really good. Next, I'm gonna add my main title and I've gone for the third preset because I think it looks really good for this example. And of course, I'm gonna use the same trick of making the line between the tracking box and the actual title transparent so you can't see that. And then I'm just going to position it, make it the right size, just do a few tweaks to make it look the best it can. And this is the final result. Of course, you've already seen it because you clicked on this video. The only other addition I made was the motion VFX text just above. Love this, it's becoming one of my favorite ways to make thumbnails. At the beginning of the video, I asked what's new with this second callouts pack and whether it's better than the first one. So what's changed? Well, I would say the styling is slightly more bold on the second pack and the presets feel a little bit more modern. Don't look at it as a replacement to pack one, more a very, very worthy expansion pack, I suppose. But is it better than pack one? I've been using the first pack for years, so I'm really familiar with it, whereas I've only had the second pack for a couple of months. So the bar was really high, but honestly, yeah, it, pack two might be even better. Maybe it's just because it's new to me and I'm still discovering new features, but on the whole, right now, I think I prefer pack two. Of course, other than this pack, there's the original M Callouts Simple Pack, M Callouts Specs, M Callouts Tech and M Callouts High Tech. I'll link all of those below for you, but here's the thing. Would you like to see reviews of M Callouts Tech and High Tech? I listen to you, I appreciate your comments and I take note. So please give me a shout in the comments section below. I don't think this video needs a section for my opinion of M Callouts 2. I think you know how I feel. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTube recommends the top one for you and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.